Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain an American dystopian drama film called Fahrenheit 451. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. The movie is set in a futuristic dystopian world. After the Second Civil War, an absolute dictatorship called the Ministry took over the United States. Under the dictatorship, people called firemen are appointed to burn every single existing book so that people cannot obtain knowledge that the Ministry doesn't want them to know. The books are replaced by the internet, called The Nine, which consists of very limited reading materials allowed by the Ministry. In the opening scene, we are introduced to a fireman named Guy Montag. He is in his futuristic house talking to an AI that helps him dress up. Montag has always been taught that reading books is a crime that will cause unhappiness, mental illness, and conflicting opinions. He has never questioned the principles of the ministry and works hard as a fireman. While getting ready, Montag listens to the news about book reading and the persevering maniacs called the eels. Eels are considered criminals by law just for trying to preserve books and the knowledge in them. Montag goes to work that morning to teach the kids about the principles of the ministry. He and his mentor, Captain John Beatty, tell the kids that the only books they should read are the books assigned by the ministry, namely The Bible, To the Lighthouse, and Moby Dick. Montag also burns two books for a demonstration as the crowd cheers for him. At night, they are alerted of eels on the move. Beatty, Montag, and their crew of firemen quickly drive to the location while singing songs about their bravery. They reach a house where a couple is trying to upload books to the internet for everyone to read. The firemen quickly stop them and break their computers. Montag then takes them outside and insults them in front of the reporters. He seizes the man's citizenship and declares him an eel by law. He also burns a pile of books in front of the camera as the people watching cheer for him. Party tricks in the future are dumb. While burning them, Montag gets flashes of his late father. Later, Beatty and Montag go to a club and meet a girl named Clarice McClellan. Clarice was once declared an eel and has been on a restriction since then. She asks Beatty to take a year off of her restriction in turn for reporting on other eels in the town, and he agrees. He and Montag go to the address she provides and find an old man shooting a video. The man is a Civil War survivor who tells them that firemen are supposed to put out fires, not create them. Beatty doesn't believe him, claiming it to be a classic eel lie. However, the old man's words strike Montag, and he begins to question if it is the truth. The firemen have been told that the creator of the fire department, Benjamin Franklin, has given them the right to burn. But the man laughs at them for believing such absurd lies fed by the ministry. He is soon arrested, and people praise the firemen for their bravery. Before going home, Montag and Beatty go to a bar to drink. Montag talks about his father being a great fireman who died while in service. We find out that after his father's death, Montag was raised by Beatty, who treats him like a brother. Later at night, Clarice meets an informer and exchanges a music recorder for information. The man tells her about a house in the woods that is a drop-off spot for books. When Montag reaches home, he asks the AI if firemen used to put out fires before the Civil War. The AI declares it as a lie and asks Montag if his vitals are fluctuating. It also suggests that he take his mandatory prescribed medicine called drops. Montag soon gets a call from Beatty and the two go to the house in the woods that Clarice has informed them about. Inside the house is an old woman reading a book. She doesn't react to the fireman breaking in and continues reading. They snatch the book from her to get her attention. Just then, a fireman calls everyone upstairs to a library containing hundreds of books. Montag is stunned as he has never seen so many books at once. Beatty asks him to take in the scene before him because he might never get to see something like this again. He also hands one of the books to the guy and asks him to read the first line. Montag nervously reads it but is stopped midway. Beatty concludes it as an example of how quickly their minds can be diverted by books. After Beatty leaves the room, curiosity gets the best of Montag, and he secretly hides a book under his shirt. After that, the firemen gather all the books downstairs and pour gasoline on them. The old woman sits quietly the whole time, but when she is asked to move outside, she refuses. Instead, the lady walks into the middle of the pile of books and burns herself alive along with them. Before dying, she says a single word, Omnis. 
Montag watches in horror as the scent of burning flesh fills the room. Along with him, the rest of the world also watches the lady burn on live television. After the commotion, Beatty is called by his senior, who accuses him of being careless. He states that the word omnis has taken over the internet, so in the revised video of the woman, he wants her to say coward instead. The following day, Montag notices the change in the video and confronts Beatty about it. He wants to know what the word omnis means, and Beatty reveals that it means everything. He uses the woman's suicide as an example to prove that reading books affects mental health. When Montag reaches home that night, he asks his AI to turn off and reads the book he had hidden. While reading out loud, the AI corrects him on one of the lines. A surprised Montag asks why it didn't turn off. The AI replies that the conversation is just between the two of them. Montag doesn't feel safe in his own home, so he runs out quickly. He eventually ends up in the area near Clarice's house. She first threatens him to stay away, but eventually agrees to talk to him after seeing the book. The two go to Clarice's apartment and read the book together. She also informs him that the ministry has been turning people illiterate so that they can rule over them. After the Civil War, they have been slowly killing people, taking over cultures in order to create a single absolute rule. She then reveals that the drops Montag takes every day are to wipe his childhood memories and to make him docile so he wouldn't question the system. Clarice was born to eel parents and was an eel herself, but as she grew up, she got tired of living life on the run. So, she came to the city disguised as a native. However, she soon got bored and started smuggling books again, only to be caught. Hence, currently, she is in restriction. The night ends as the two play harmonica together. When Montag returns home, he is an entirely different person. He doesn't take the drops that day to test if Clarice is really telling the truth. Because of this, he receives a flashback of the time when he was little and his father used to give him books. Beatty holds a meeting the next day and reveals that some eels have been able to code the knowledge of thousands of books into DNA. That code is called the Omnis, and the eels are planning to send the Omnis to Canada to be distributed. If that happens, the world will have access to all the books ever written, and the entire mission of the firemen will be for naught. To quickly find the Omnis, all the firemen come together and collect eels hiding throughout the city in a warehouse. They hit and torture the poor men for the information, but they do not budge. Clarice is also caught by the firemen and brought there. Montag stands quietly behind Beatty and observes the people being beaten. He catches one of the eels trying to run away and again gets flashbacks of his past. This time, he sees some firemen hitting his father with a pile of books on the ground. Back in the present, all of the eels are kept in a line and threatened, but none of them reveal where the Omnis is. Suddenly, Montag switches the lights off, giving the eels a chance to run away. The firemen run around to catch them, but Clarice manages to escape along with a few other eels. While pretending to look for them, Montag finds a little girl and her father hiding in a bathroom. He simply closes the shower curtains and leaves. However, Beatty sees him doing this and arrests the eels. Later, Beatty calls Montag in his office and furiously asks him why he pretended he didn't see the criminals. Montag says it was because of the little girl. He felt compassionate towards the eels, to which Beatty replies that they often use kids as decoys, so Montag needs to be tougher. Montag then takes his jacket off and hands it to Beatty, resigning from his position. An enraged Beatty throws the jacket at him, claiming that he didn't spend so much time teaching him the ministry's principles for him to resign that easily. He threatens to burn Montag to ashes if he ever betrays him. After the interaction, Beatty assigns another officer to keep an eye on Montag. A while later, we see Montag and Clarice meet. Clarice is with her fellow eel friends, who ask Montag to get into the car and drive away. It is evident that the eels are not fond of him, but Clarice assures them he is on their side. Meanwhile, Beatty sees a video of Montag getting inside an eel's car and is furious at the betrayal. Montag is blindfolded and taken to a secret eel hideout where he meets Clarice's friends and mentors. All of them have memorized one book each, so even if they are found, the books exist forever. To test Montag's loyalty, they ask him to kill a fireman they have captured. Montag is about to stab the guy, but the others stop him, telling him that he has passed. After finally being accepted into the team, he is told about a young guy named Clifford. He possesses a bird that has the DNA encoded with the books, called the Omnis. Clifford's mother was the geneticist who created Omnis and injected it into the bird. 
Now, the Canadian scientists have taken responsibility to duplicate the bird's DNA and inject it into every other animal in the world so the information inside the books can spread. Hence, they need Montag's help to send the bird to a group of scientists in Canada. Montag then meets Clifford, who is a genius with over 1,300 books memorized. Montag picks up a random book from Clifford's collection to test him and is pleasantly surprised by his unique skill. He is tasked to bring a transponder from the fire department because the Canadian scientists are transmitting a homing signal to find the bird. Unaware that Beatty knows his secret, Montag goes to the fire department. He walks inside the building with ease and manages to get a transponder. But before he can leave, he encounters Beatty. Beatty asks him if he still wants to resign. Montag plays along and says he is ready for a raid. The two gear up and drive to the supposed raid, but they stop in front of Montag's home where the media has gathered to report shocking information about him. Montag doesn't question anyone and simply walks inside to find a pile of books on the floor. The firemen claim that the books were found in his house and falsely accuse him of being an eel. Beatty asks him to burn the books on the floor and he obliges. Just then, he gets a flashback of Beatty arresting his father for owning books. But unfortunately, he cannot do anything. He is brought outside and declared an eel. Suddenly, Montag gets his hands on a gun and manages to flee. Clarice picks him up in her car and the two drive to the secret hideout. However, before they get there, the place is raided by the firemen. They set fire to all the books and kill most of Clarice's friends and mentors. When Montag reaches there, he sneaks into the burning barn and finds Clifford's dead body. Thankfully, the bird is still alive inside a cage. As he ties a transponder to its feet, Beatty appears behind him and asks him to stop. Montag looks him dead in the eyes and sets the bird free. After it flies away, an enraged Beatty burns Montag alive. In the last scene, we see the bird joining with an immense flock over Canada. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.